Well, this is Dr. Frederick with a, a question from a student about performing chi-square in Excel. It, it's not easy to do a chi-square analysis in Excel. Basically, to do chi-square in Excel, you have to understand what chi-square is. Now, a student says that he's followed the video exactly uh, and doesn't get the right answer. And unfortunately, the student isn't doing everything that the video did correctly. And it's a it's no reflection on the student. It's just hard to uh, to to keep these concepts straight. What the what the video actually does is to show you how to compute a p value, which is the probability of seeing an excel, a chi square of that magnitude or higher. And uh, so p value is is not the same thing as a chi square value. So the student's saying, well, I'm getting a, a value that's completely different than the chi-square reported for the quiz. Here's a problem from the, um, the sample quiz, and we have basically six data points here. Here's our six data points. We have two groups, each of who got a different message about littering, and this is the outcome of what happened to the message about littering. And so we have this distribution of outcomes for 200 flyers that were distributed. This is the observed. So let's just write over here, this is observed. Okay. And what we want to make is an expected distribution if there's no relationship between the, the message and the outcome. That's our hypothesis, is that... The, that there is no relationship between the message and the outcome. That would be the null hypothesis. Okay, so we want to get our expected values, and, and that's done by what's taking the marginals here and multiplying them and then dividing by the, the totals. So the expected value for cell 1, 1 is column 1 times, well, let's try it again. column 1 times the total for column uh, row 1. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lay my cursor over that and hit F4 and put some little dollar signs in that. Yep. Let's try it again. I'm trying to get you to be able to see it, so I'm going to go times the row total. Now I'm going to lay my cursor over this and hit F4 and now I'm going to hit divide by now what happened I put dollar G dollar six it says I don't want to change that value for future calculations and then I'm going to divide by the total and again I'm going to lay my cursor over this and hit F4 okay so that's supposed to do this calculation here. I don't know what happened. Okay. So let's do it again. Times. We'll take the column total times the row total. And then we hit F4. Divide by the total. And then I'm going to hit F4 for this again. Okay. Now hit enter. And there, there's my expected value for row 1, column 1. Now, because I put those dollar signs in there, I can just now hit copy and paste into these cells. And the only value that changed was here, D8, went to E8, went to F8, and the other value stayed the same. So I went here, this times this divided by this, and now I want to go this times this divided by this. These two things don't change, so I use that F4 function. It says don't change that value, but otherwise shift it by one every time we do it. Okay, now let's do I just hit escape to get that little indicator off. Okay, now I'm going to hit equals column 
total times row 2 total. And again, I'm going to hit highlight and hit F4. I'm going to divide by the total for all cells. Okay? And then I'm going to hit F4 on that. Okay, there's the expected value for cell 2, 1. Okay? Now I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to paste it right here. And again, all it does, hit escape. All it does is, you know, just shifts it by one. Okay, now go to the next column and multiply here, divide here. Next, go to the next column. Okay. So now, when you look at your video uh, in the course, you see this is what they use. Let's just highlight these. These are the observed values, these are the expected values, and we're going to do some comparison of these. Now, what they did uh, in the video was use a formula called equal chi test right here okay and then it says okay I'm going to grab these data that's my first one comma that was my observed range now here's my expected range in parentheses and, and that is not a chi-square value that's what the students misunderstanding is that is not a chi-square value I don't know that Excel has a formula to compute chi-square for you. This is the probability of observing whatever chi-square exists for these data or higher. Now, what does that mean? It means that we don't have a significant chi-square. We're not going to reject the null hypothesis. To reject the null hypothesis, this value, this p-value, remember in the video he typed p here to remind you it's a p-value. The p-value has to be 0.05 or lower for us to reject the null hypothesis. So that's what the video is calculating, the p-value. Wasn't very helpful for the assignment, was it? So, let's now do observed minus expected. That's, the, that's what we actually have to do. So we're going to say, alright, I'm going to take this value, I'm sorry, we have to hit the equal sign first. We have to hit equal, take that value, subtract this value, observe minus expected. Now we'll just do that for all six squares. Okay, we're just going to copy that in there. And this is the nice thing about Excel, so it just shifts the calculation. Now this is what? It's E6 minus E10. And this will be F6 minus F10. And this will be D7 minus D11, okay? So, it just shifts those calculations. So now we have this. And what we want to then have is observed. I'll just do O minus E squared. We want to square those values. Okay, so put equal. And squaring, there's probably some square function in Excel. I don't know it. I just multiply them by themselves, okay? Alright, so that's this value squared. Copy. Alright, there's all the observed minus expected values squared. And what is chi-square? Chi-square is all of these values added up. So we'll put down chi-square here. Let's just move that over a little bit, okay? And then we'll say it's equal to the sum, open parentheses, of all these values, in parentheses. Okay, so our, our chi-square is 78.57? I don't think so. Alright, so what did I do wrong here? Oh, we're not done yet. It's O minus E squared divided by E. Alright, so chi-square is the sum of all of that. So let's do it again. So O minus E squared I have. I want to divide it by E. Here's E, the expected value. Let's do it again. So it's equal to this value 
divided by this value. Okay. Now see, it's not easy to do, is it? Okay, now we're going to repeat that. Now we'll type in chi-square. And it's equal to the sum of those six values. So, sum open parentheses, capture the values in parentheses, and that is our chi-square. Alright, so now, what we really want to know is, is that significant? Well, we already saw that it wasn't, because if we did the chi-square test, uh, let's do chi test, we're going to grab these data, let's just repeat the chi test, comma, grab the next, the expected values, in parentheses, all right, that's our p-value. Our p-value says it's not significant. So, what does that mean for you practically? It means that if we want to get the critical value of chi-square, is the critical value going to be bigger than or less than that number? Well, it's going to be bigger than this number. In other words, chi-square is only significant when its value is the same or more than the critical value. So the critical value must be much higher than 2.64 because this p-value is very high. All right, how could we find the critical value of chi-square um, you know, using technology, let's say? Um, well, let's just think about it. Um, we might want to find the critical value. So let's let's go to Google and we'll do a chi square. Now here we go. Chi square critical value calculator. All right. And here's one. I've used it before obviously. And we want to know our degrees of freedom. So what's the degrees of freedom? Degrees of freedom is equal to R minus one times C minus one. So how many rows are there? There's two rows. That's R minus 1 is 1. How many columns are there? 2. So we want to know the critical value when we have 2 degrees of freedom. And alpha is 0.05. Calculate 5.99. Alright, so let's look at it a different way because I think it might make sense to you. Let's just do a chi square calculator. Or let's. Here, pre p value calculator, that's what I want. So, I have two degrees of freedom. If I have two degrees of freedom, let's just calculate that a chi square of 8 has a probability of less than 0.05. That's, you know, if that's my chi square, I have a significant chi square. It's greater than that expected under the null hypothesis, and let's just work backwards. So let's go to 6 and calculate. Oh, very close to 0.05 here. And so since I know it's 5.99, just put it in there and what? There's the critical value. It's the point at which the probability of this value or higher when the degrees of freedom is 2 is, is 5%. Okay? That's what the critical value means. So we probably have all the information we need to solve problems in this homework by understanding how chi-square is computed. We start out with our observed values. We determine what our expected values are. We subtract our expected values from our observed value. It doesn't matter which one you subtract from the other, actually. It's because you're going to square them. And then you're going to divide by the expected value. That's the step I missed earlier. And once you get these, these values, you add them up to get your chi-square and you can use a calculator, you can use a table to find your critical value by determining what your degrees of freedom are. And then the, what the actual chi-square test in Excel have to do with finding probabilities, but why, why they don't have a, a, a formula just to determine chi-square? Maybe they do and I just don't know it, but uh, I've always done it like this. Okay, hope that's helpful.